Hello and welcome back. Today we're continuing our look at the top 10 breakout fantasy players from 2324. And today we're specifically looking at number four, Thomas Harley. Now you'll remember number six was also from Dallas. That was Wyatt Johnston. So to have two players in the top 10 on this list is a really good sign for Dallas Stars fans. Now Dallas drafted him 18th overall back in 2019 and Thomas Harley had shown his prowess as an offensive defenseman for Mississauga in the OHL. In his final season in junior, he averaged a little bit under a point per game, which was really impressive for the Blue Liner. In 2021, Harley got his first taste of pro hockey with the Texas Stars of the AHL, putting up 25 points in 38 games, which was a sign of what was to come. In 21-22, Harley got 34 games with the NHL club, but he struggled to reproduce his offensive game, managing only four points before being sent back down. He played most of the 22-23 season in the AHL, putting up solid numbers, enough to earn a call-up for six regular season games, but more importantly, 19 playoff games with Dallas. In his first taste of NHL playoff action, he impressed with nine points in those 19 games, which proved to be a sample of what was to come. This past season, Harley absolutely exploded for 15 goals, 32 assists, 47 points in 75 games, and even got some power play time, scoring nine points on the man advantage. Now, as we turn to his player hub, the first thing that sticks out to me is his plus minus on the far right. He's a plus 28 in his first basically full season in the NHL. He lost his rookie eligibility in 21-22 but he did basically play his first season this game or this year and plus 28 regardless of what you think of plus minus that is a really good number and if you do play in a league that has plus minus this is a team that's going to be you know one of those very good defensive teams with a powerful offense with guys like Johnston and obviously their top line even though they lose Pavelski they still have Robertson and Hints so this is a team that's going to be a gold mine for plus minus players if you're in a league like that and Thomas Harley proved that he can be one of those guys as well now, I want to explain one important point about how this hub was constructed. So during the season, I was using positional percentile averages to populate this bar graph. Now, for the purposes of this exercise to compare to other seasons of data, I went back to the standard percentiles. So that's why he's 73rd percentile in goals. But if we turn to his hub during the season with the positional percentiles, 97th percentile in terms of goals per game for defensemen. So he's one of the best offensive goal scoring defensemen that they have in the league. He tied for eighth in goals amongst defensemen, which is really impressive. And he also tied for 22nd in points with players like Charlie McAvoy and Noah Hannafin, both of whom have seen some Norris uh, consideration in terms of voting. So this is a very impressive rookie season, even though it's not his official rookie season, his first full season in the NHL. He's putting up numbers like this. Now, another thing that I like about his file is the shot blocking. So 89th percentile, again, this is for the entire league. This is not just defensemen. 1.71 blocks per game is not the best you're going to find in a defenseman, but it is really solid if you're in a league with blocks, whether it be a points league or a categories league. Now, with that said, if you're in a categories league, he's not the best hitter. 40th percentile there, a little bit under a hit per game, but you're not necessarily getting him for that. You're getting him for his offensive production. Shot volume is a little bit low for my taste, 1.82, and in order for him to keep that goal production up, I would imagine he would have to get closer to two and a half shots per game, though his 10.4 shooting percentage may be sustainable. It's not unusual or crazy high like 30-40% like we've seen with some other guys. Now another thing to mention is the power play production. With Haskin and locked in as their number one D, I would imagine that puts a ceiling on Harley's power play ice time and therefore his production. So he was productive in that time. He has the nine power play points with a power play goal, and he's 75th percentile with uh, those power play uh, points that he did get. But barring an injury to Haskinen, I don't see him increasing his power play time. So as a young player, some of these guys on this list are going to get an elevated role. We just talked about Dylan Gunther uh, at number five, and he might get an elevated role on the power play. Wyatt Johnston may get an elevated role, but I would imagine that Harley will share time with Haskinen, uh, you know, in a best case scenario. I don't think... Barring an injury again, uh, which we don't want to see from Haskinen, I don't think he will take the number one spot, but I could be proven wrong on that. Now, that's arguably good news as he will slide in your fantasy drafts, and he could be the perfect D3 for your lineup next year, depending on what you're looking for out of that position. Some guys like to get the hits and block specialist, like a Truba or somebody with their third defenseman. You want those two power play quarterback D. The third one is a little bit of a, you know, you can go either way on it. Offensive guy, if you're in a points league that weights certain things heavier, or a 
two way hit, hits a blocks kind of guy like a Truba or whatever if you're in a categories league and you want to boost those categories. But either way, this guy will probably slide outside the top 100. Now, aside from everything I just mentioned, the main reason that we're talking about Thomas Harley on this list is that he led the entire group of people who were above 60 in player rating in 23-24 that had the most improvement from year to year. So um, as we look at this table right here, he is number one. He basically doubled his player rating, which is a measure of completeness for fantasy. So the fact that he skyrocketed up, and you can see it here, as we bring back in the line graph at the bottom, he jumped from a 35 to a 73, which means there could be a little bit of a risk of regression. Um, I wouldn't jump on him too, too early in the draft, but for dynasty or keeper leagues, he would be a sneaky addition if you haven't already done so. In redraft leagues, I would imagine him going somewhere around the 100 mark as there's still some quality value defensemen in that range. I kind of view him as a, a player similar to Vince Dunn, but with more goal scoring potential. And two years ago, Dunn was incredible value. I found him off the waiver wire, used him for the second half of the season to replace John Carlson, who went down with injury. But last year, Dunn was picked around 98 on average. So he was probably a solid option in that range, but maybe not incredible value the way he was the previous year. And I would expect the same type of thing with Harley this season, where even if he does regress, you're not jumping too early to get him and it's not going to come back to bite you. But that's going to do it for this one. We're in the home stretch now. Up next, we have the top three, and one of those three may be getting talked about as we head into the July free agency period. That's all I'll say for now. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.